where they would farm and you know raise food and all that. And then sort of the rich and market system started kind of kicking them off and privatizing them, taking them for themselves, and, and, and basically closing people to being forced into the market system, right? taking away from them. Exactly. Exactly. So enclosure started in England, like some of the other colonization movements. Uh, and the, when it got started, the land was owned commonly. And by the people, they, they used the land, they shared it, they shared the forest. Uh, and then the land and the gentry, the wealthy, seized the land and used it uh, for their own needs. Uh, so it's very, very similar to privatization, which is, we see a lot of that. Actually, it sounds just like it. What's that? I said it sounds exactly like it. It is. It is. It's just it's an extension. It's, it's how it has come through history. Um, you know, even the Pope uh, was really into the uh, enclosure movement. Uh, and when the Pope Alexander VI, the Borgia Pope, right, the famous crazy predation Borgia, um, he, when Columbus came to, to the hemisphere, the Borgia Pope uh, gave all the land well, to uh, basically a couple of, of monarchs. Right? Like one continent went to Ferdinand and Isabella in Portugal, another one went to Spanish. And, and he had he had the attitude that, oh, I am the leader, those lands are mine to do with the I can fit. So I'm gonna give them to to the people who uh, basically have a trading power. Um, although there were already people there, there were already animals there, um, so the enclosure, privatization, colonization is, is all very, very, very connected. So, there are many, many crimes that are being happening, that are happening against the commons. Uh, not just the enclosure, in privatization, I like to call crime by their real name: theft, mm. fraud, murder, biopiracy, ecocide. Uh, biopiracy is what I'm talking about. They're appropriating and privatizing genes, right? They are stealing nature. Um, so I heard recently that India has now sued Monsanto for theft of nature. And so this is exactly what we're talking about. Um, so figuring out what the commons are, naming the crime, there are several different ways to, to stop those crimes from happening. Uh, and some of them are with the laws, and some of them are with legal structures like trust. So, to me, the crucial path for humanity at this historic moment is to become aware and see what we share and realize what's at stake. Because once these things are privatized, it's gone. You know, we're going to have to fight and reclaim it. Um, and then to collaborate to protect what is ours uh, and to uh, protect what we cannot live without. We cannot live without access to energy. Right? Um, so, a couple more terms I'd like to introduce. The first one is a commoner. Now, most of us think a commoner is a second class citizen, a peon, whatever. That couldn't be farther from the truth. A commoner is, uh, in modern news, of the people who use a particular con. Um, and they are also people that are dedicated to protecting and reclaiming the cause. Commoners are not people powerless. They are not peons. They are the people that have the power to change them, to turn it around. And there's another word, common name, and this is a verb. And it's what commoners do. Uh, it's the action of uh, protecting our talking about what we're doing today is a form of commoners. You know,
talk about what we share, uh, and hopefully it will lead to conversation with how we can protect what we share. So, the society we have now is a debt-based society, debt-based economy, right? It's all based around the market, and it's all uh, revolved around debt. Who owes who what? And it's not necessarily owing each other, it's owing the wealthy. And personally, that feels like a form of enslavement. Um, one of the greatest potentials for the commons uh, is creating a commons-based society or a resource-based economy. Okay? So this is really how we can heal. This has gone terribly, terribly wrong. Uh, it's a commons-based society. It's a society whose economy, political culture, and community life uh, revolve around promoting a diverse variety of common institutions and the basic principles of the common. Um, there is an important role for uh, an economic market, a flourishing economic within a common based society, but its value is not truly more important than the value of the common. It's the value of the common that comes first. So, one of the structures, one of the structures uh, that can help us lead to a common space, help us create a common space society, is a common trust. And a trust is a very, very old form uh, of a structure, organization, uh, and it's a, a legal entity that's created to manage the assets on behalf of the beneficiary. So. Say, uh, say the Gulf of Mexico had a commons trust and it's protected in a commons trust and there were trustees that uh, over that, that their only job was to protect that commons for the future and make sure that the resources that are in the Gulf uh, are used equitably. That Corporations or whoever uses those resources don't are not able to externalize their trash back into the commons, right? So if if the Gulf of Mexico was protected by a commons trust, BP would be paying us for the oil, right? Because we're stakeholders. We are in that area. We live in that area. Uh, BP would pay us for the oil. They would not have been able to do anything that would compromise the health of that commons. And they would have to pay us and pay the commons to restore it for any things that they did wrong. So you can see that this really has some tremendous potential. Um, so there is a movement afoot to create the Great Lakes of the Commons. Google Great Lake Commons and, and find out more information about that. So, I've got some more I could share, and I've got a bunch of discussion questions. It's 3.37, so I think I would like to, to, to ask a couple of questions and to open it for your questions at this point. And if we want to keep talking once the band starts to get involved in another area, uh, to continue talking. Huge topic. Uh, there is a very large international movement that is gaining ground, commons movement, happy to plug you into that. Um, my first question to you guys uh, is how is the movement created to start connected to the commons? How is the Occupy movement connected to the commons? Um, I guess uh, from uh, from the perspective I have, is that whether or not people realize that it's connected to the common movement, that's exactly what Occupy is about. It, it's about common spaces, it's about common interests. 
like everything that you mentioned really is everything that we're doing. It, it it's very much about. I guess to a certain extent, you could think of the Occupy movement as sort of being this organically derived commons trust of people's social welfare. If that makes any sense. I mean, that's that's from what you've described as the commons and what I've seen of the Occupy movement. That's kind of. Yeah, I would say even at a simpler level, um, an occupation is common. Like when we take a space, that is a common. And I know that from my perspective, um, when I first saw the Occupy movements popping up, um, there was a part of me that was like, yeah, yeah, this is awesome. We're you know taking people, are taking parks, and they're feeding people, and they're doing things with that. And, you know, it's really cool. But like, there was a part of me that was like, yeah, but nobody has done this before. And I mean, this is kind of you know, there are curfews and laws and things like that. I mean, I like what's going on, but I don't see how we can make that last. But I can see how, you know, with a switch of perspective and by looking at this as a commons as opposed to a space where a municipality can come in and say, we're going to put a curfew on this space and you have to be gone after 10, and even though it's completely open and completely available, we're going to make the homeless people sleep on the sidewalk and on the street and whatever. Um, I can see how, you know, switching to a commons perspective, yeah, that's totally legitimate use of that space. And historically, that was kind of how it was done. I mean, you basically, you know, you would be a gypsy or something, and you would just put up a camp. And, you know, you might camp on the outskirts of the village or something, and that, you know, set up a carnival or something. You didn't have to go necessarily find a lord and get a license to have a carnival. You just did it, you know, because it was sort of the common. And, you know, by switching your perspective a bit, you know, you can could, you could accommodate that whole thing. The act of occupying is a form of common. Right, I mean, yeah, that's a good, good way to phrase that. Mm -hmm. that's okay. um, the word that shares the etymology as uh, a community, the country community, um, the community common, all those things, uh, they share a root. Um, real quick on the enclosure thing, um, we're all for it, like, everyone, like, the whole Occupy Wall Street thing being about um, economic conditions starting to really, like, we've, we've always kind of accepted that there have been, like, poor people, that, you know, and we've always been very good at just kind of blaming them for that. And then once the middle class started to step down into that as well, it was like, hang on, and it, like, it started bothering me. But the fact that everyone participates in a market system at all where people do some job they don't like to earn money to go buy something from someone else who just like that is because of the explosion. People have access to just living life on the planet. Like birds don't want jobs to go buy bird seeds. Birds just kinda of go around and collect whatever seeds they can find. And they have families and communities and that's how every other species interacts on the planet. It's how humans live for the first couple hundred thousand years until social hierarchy started forcing people and owning off the land and the enclosure movement shutting people into this thing where it's like, look, we own this, and you get your right space from us. And so this is pushback against that to say, look, as far as the matter of human dignity, like, we want access to just life on the planet as a living thing. Um, we're going to push back against this idea that a handful of people get to claim they own it based on nothing more than the planet. And then I'll be right for yeah. <laughs> What's up? I said you don't know the right birds. I know some birds that are going to be dedicated to like dive bombing me and squashing me with their little jaws. And then, uh, as far as Occupy being uh, connected to all that, uh, uh, what is this? Oh, and also common law, common law, all the things come back to that. Like what part like the laws we all like this idea of being common, either an outlaw or living within the common law. And these people lived together in these common spaces and they had sort of a set with interacting with each other, which they called the common law. So we only really do that now when you think of like it being common law married, like accidentally being married to the person who lived with for seven years. Um, but so like these, if you were an outlaw, you were a person who just lived even beyond that. And it wasn't that you were a bad person who was committing crimes, but you just weren't part of that particular common law. Yeah, so I, I, I feel like human not only have access, should they have the right to access the commons of the people, also mm -hmm. our stakeholders and in the environmental commons as well. Uh, but I, I'm very techie oriented, so one comment that I've been aware of is the fair use and how, you know, folk music, we were allowed to reinterpret things that other people sang and sing those things in our own way and that kind of stuff. And of course, that's been an encouragement and an encouragement. <coughs> I think that we're all focused on these 
tons of issues in the Occupy movement, banks, and food, and the environment. You know, we could go on every single one of the comments you mentioned is under incursion. So I would relate it to the Occupy movement, but I don't think it's necessarily about any one of those issues. Yes, we're all concerned about all of those commons being reestablished, but how I see the Occupy movement is uh, that, at least with fair use, by reducing the commons, what, what, that has, what that does to us is that reduces the amount of culture that we're able to have. If you can't put a cow in the square, then you're not going to meet your neighbors as much, you're not going to participate in the community as much. And so I see Occupy movement as not a, directly to uh, a response to the incursion of the commons, but a response to a cultural deficiency syndrome, which is a disease that all Americans now have because every single one of our commons has been taken away from us over the last 50 to 100 years. It's all back to us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I shouldn't say a lot of things that we do, too, like highlighting the comments that we've lost, you know, so taking the street, the street car comments, and the only thing that says that they have to be used so far is the police that will run you over if you want to get them. And so I'm just like, it's all, a lot of the things that we do do highlight those comments, the fact that, well, why can't we walk in the street, you know, why, why can't we use them? Yeah. 
I've been giving some thought to the word occupy ever since the start, and I had some apprehensions about even being interested enough to uh, follow through to even find out about it, what it was. Because I, I thought, what do they think that they're actually occupying when they're taking a city square and putting up some tents there? Uh, they don't physically own the property. They haven't written any contractual state, you know, obligations to the property, and the. For certain, they're not going to be allowed to stay there forever. So it's just going to be a matter of time before they're thrown off the property. So what is it that we actually own when we say we occupy? What is it that you personally think about it? What do you occupy? Well, right now we're occupying the space. But then tomorrow we come back and we occupy it again for a certain period of time. And then I'll probably never be back in this space again. So I occupied it for a moment in time. All right. What I think we all sort of have a different idea of is, is the concept of an occupier. It's like we really occupy a, an idea more than anything. If you think about, well, how did we end up here in the first place? Well, there were native people that were here before we were. And some other people came in and decided that they wanted to occupy the space that the native people had. Well, those were our relatives. Those were the people that came over. I mean, I'm not native. Well, I wasn't here. My people weren't here a thousand years ago. So someone occupied before we occupied. Someone had the idea that they wanted to come here and occupy. We came here today and decided we wanted to occupy this space. So conceptually, there's a difference, I think, between philosophically occupying and actually physically, tangibly, real estate-wise, owning and occupying. When you say we occupy the streets, well, yeah, if you pay taxes like everyone else, then you help to pay to pave the street, then you get to use the street. That doesn't mean that you own the street 24 hours a day. Same with the city hall steps. You know, you can occupy the steps, but to stay on the steps all the time 24 hours a day is squatting, and that means someone else can't use the steps. All right, so I think there has to be a certain amount of fairness when you're talking about in terms of the Boston Commons, from probably the first Commons or Jamestown, wherever the first Commons were, was meant to be a place where stuff could go on that was outside of your little plot where you grew your vegetables, so that you could do stuff with other people. That was the concept of the Commons. So I'll stop now. <laughs> Um, well, I was I was going to kind of say in response to that, I think one thing that, like, I mean, like you're talking about, like, no one filled out a contract or anything like that, I think one of the things we've really lost is this idea of, like you said, the commons, or, or some people also put it, collective ownership. No, maybe I don't own... And, 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 and it's kind of this idea of, well, you know, we own as individuals, but really... I don't own part of the street. Like the taxes that I paid when I was working didn't go to pay for pay for a specific part of the street. I own just as much of all of that street as anyone else who paid those taxes. And 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 so it 
So it's not about like taking it away from the use of other people, but sort of having this demonstration to sort of like jar them awake and be like, hey, this is, you know, this street belongs to you. I mean, that was sort of like the really enlightening experience of being in a co-op is the fact that there was a co-op kitchen and it was my kitchen and it was also everyone else's kitchen as well. And, you know, I had come from, I had originally come from an idea very much like individual ownership. But then when I actually experienced it, it was something completely different than what I was expecting. It wasn't like I, I felt like, you know, having that realization didn't make me feel like I owned the kitchen less or only partially owned the kitchen. It made me realize that, you know, sort of like we can all own so liberating. And so just to be able to, to, and that's what we're really trying to do is make them realize that there are these things that belong to all of us, every single one of us. And, and, and we're not boldly seizing them to sort of like seize them instead of allowing other people to use it, but all those people who are never using that city hall space, who are never thinking to use it, you know, it's like trying to jar them and wake them up and be like, hey, you can use that space too. You know, to, to, to make them have that realization. And to also, um, like I know we had several events that went on concurrent with Occupy when we had the physical occupation. That realization that it doesn't have to be one person using it or another. We can share. You know, yes, a, an unmanaged common does destroy itself. But you know, if everyone does stick to that one cow, guess what? Everyone has enough meat. Everyone has enough milk. You know, it, 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 it's realizing that we don't have to have that ex excess. We don't have to do better than the Joneses. We don't have to get that better house. You know, it's like... Yeah, it's not about having excess enough. Yeah. <laughs> Whoever dies is the most choice to win, right? Yeah. It's not it. It's about how can we share? Who's sharing the most? And yeah, yeah, you. yeah. Oh, he's pretty much said everything I was going to Okay. Well, we're right almost at 4 o'clock, so at this point of information, I think this is about time you know, we're up to all people setting up a living room. It's, it's pertinent. They're setting up a living room in front of Bank of America, not inside, but on the sidewalk, and the cops are there in masks. <laughs> 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 They're all sitting on the furniture, and somebody tweeted, why are the police in our living room? <laughs> 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 definitions, the glossary, all different kinds of key terms related to the commons. Uh, there's also at the bottom a few links.